Hey y'all, this is Kylie from Wild Lemon Fitness. Thanks so much for joining us in our online studio. Let's work out. Welcome back to our online studio, and I'm so excited about today's class. It's one of my absolute favorites to teach. It's called Roll and Release. Um, we're going to be getting into your fascia, breaking up everything, bringing some mobility and flexibility into that body. Everybody needs it. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. Um, for today's class, we are going to use props. I have with me a 36-inch medium density roller. If you've got a roller that has a bunch of, like, nodes and nodules on it, just be a little bit more gentle. Um, this is the gentlest roller that I usually work with. And I've got a pinky ball here. This is by OPTP. Um, if you don't have a pinky ball, you can use a tennis ball, um, something soft. You don't want anything that's too, too hard. But we're basically going to be using these instruments to roll out our entire bodies. So really good, fun stuff. Uh, but before we get into all of that, I'm going to move these out of the way. Uh, we're going to bring a little heat into the body so that we can roll everything out. So let's start actually on all fours today, coming to kneeling, and then place those hands on the mat. If this is your first time moving your body today, take a moment and listen to what your body needs. Maybe you need a little side to side sway in your hips. Maybe you've been sitting all day and you need to send your hands out front, send your pelvic bone out forward and do some fallback stretches to loosen up those hip flexors. And right away, you're gonna notice I'm getting right into my breath, trying to be mindful and connecting my breath with my movement here. I'm stacking my bones. We're gonna get into cat-cow. So on the inhale, we're gonna drop the navel and lift the gaze. And on the exhale, round the spine. <sighs> Breathing into the movement. Inhale. And exhale. I encourage you to close your eyes. Try to just connect with your body. Try to cancel out any distractions here. And just try to listen to what your body needs. We're going to widen the knees to the outside edges of the mat. And we're circling back. So shifting the weight around. Feeling this stretch along our inner thighs. Sort of a modified child's pose. Circling back. Let's do the reverse of that. Just waking everything up gently. Good, and then sitting on those heels, fingertip walking out to stretch the shoulders. Big deep breaths here. And on that exhale, we're dragging the hands along the mat and we're gonna reach for our foam roller and get into it. So I'm going to place this roller long ways, perpendicular to the mat. I failed college algebra three times, NBD. We're gonna place our bra line, if you have a bra on, bras are optional, on that roller right in the middle of your back and firmly press those feet into the floor, sinking those hips down. Let's weave the fingers together under the base of the neck and take a big inhale at the top on the exhale, collapse over that roller. <sighs> Stretch. Wow, that feels good. Inhale. On the exhale, chin to chest, we're coming up off of that roller. <sighs> One more big deep breath. Open up those elbows, inhale. Exhale, drag it down. <sighs> Let's take a couple of breaths down here. If you feel discomfort here or pain, we never wanna feel pain, you can adjust that roller a little higher or a little lower depending on what your body needs. But this should feel like a nice chest opening stretch. On that next exhale, we're gonna curl up, slide those shoulders down and back and press the head into the hands. Then press those feet into the floor and lift the hips. We're rolling back and forth, rolling out all the fascia along our mid back. If you've ever had a deep tissue massage, often a massage therapist will say, you've got adhesions or you carry so much stress in your back. Um, those are little knots and nodules in your fascia. Fascia is a little sinewy material that covers all of our organs and muscles. 
and it's everywhere in our body. And when there's little lumps and bumps in the fascia, um, it's really hard to send messages from the brain to the limbs. So we wanna roll out that fascia, make sure we're nice and hydrated so we get circulation in the body. Maybe one more pass here. And then we're gonna line that roller right up to that mid back and lower the hips and extend the legs long on the mat. Release those arms, we're collapsing over the roller. Notice how much deeper we can get into this stretch after we've rolled out that mid back. Big deep breaths here. Opening up that chest, let's bend the knees, place the feet on the floor and weave the fingers again behind the head. We're gonna curl up to seated and from here I'm gonna reach my hands toward my thighs and come all the way off of that roller. And we're gonna send the roller back a little bit further and I'm placing it underneath my neck. So bear with me here. I'm holding on to the edges of my roller. We only have one neck, we wanna protect it. So always be mindful that that roller doesn't slip out from under you. Get a good grip on the ends. We're gonna roll that left ear all the way to the roller. Come back through center. And then send that right ear all the way to the roller. <sighs> Breathing as we go. Rolling out. Yes, there's even fascia and there are muscles in your neck. And we are on our phones all day, every day. And that puts a lot of strain on the back of our neck. That's why we need Pilates. Let's come all the way back through, do one more pass. If you come across a little sticky spot in your neck, you can nod up and down here or lift the toes and dig those heels in and give yourself a little yes and no nod, breaking up that neck. Again, you can always close your eyes and just be in your body here. Come back through center. I'm gonna imagine I've got a little laser beam shooting out from the tip of my nose or paintbrush. And I wanna draw a big circle on the ceiling with that laser beam. Articulating through this circle, exaggerating this motion. And then we're gonna reverse that circle. Good. One more time. Nice, let's lift our head off of the roller. We're gonna extend the roller out above us and I'm reaching for the ends of the roller before I extend my legs long. Shake out that neck if we're feeling any tension here. And holding on to that roller, take a big inhale and on the exhale, we're gonna roll all the way up to seated and place that roller underneath our calf muscles. So we're sitting up tall. If, you're, if you've chronically tight calves like me, you're gonna really have a love-hate relationship with this one. So we're gonna start by bringing those feet parallel to our hips and we're just windshield wipering out. Muscle fibers run this way. So we're trying to break them up by going the opposite direction before we roll. The goal here is to soften the muscles. We don't wanna be really flexed out as we try to roll out these muscles. Try to release all the tension. Think about sliding the shoulders down and back, having a little softness in your elbows here, and we're just working that roller up and down those calves. Take as much time as you need here. You can pause and keep rolling. Listen to your body. I'm gonna cross my right ankle over my left and just roll out that left calf muscle, making several passes back and forth, rolling over to the side of the calf, maybe adjusting that roller a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending on where your body needs it. And then we're gonna uncross and go right into that other side, rolling out the calf. Intentional, slow rollouts here. We're not really speed demoning these rollouts. Adjust that roller as you need to. Make a few passes. Again, if you come across a little sticky spot, hold pressure on that spot. Give a little extra love. 
No two bodies are the same. No two sides of the same body are ever the same. So you're going to notice one side feels way more tight than the other. That's okay. That's why we're here, to try to come back to balance. All right, we're going to walk that roller back, and we're going to come to sit on top of that roller. I might need to adjust this a little bit back so we can see what I'm doing. And I'm sitting right on top of this roller. From here, I'm going to walk my hands behind me, slide the shoulders down and back. So you've got a proud chest, like I've got a pretty necklace I'm trying to show off. And then lift the feet up off of the floor. We're going to make a few passes back and forth here. Working out those hamstrings. And then externally rotate the feet. So those toes are facing apart from each other, heels are facing together. And see how that changes where we feel this work. Big thing with foam rolling is you never want to roll over a joint. We want to be gentle on the joints. We're rolling out the muscles. Rotate those toes together, feeling this roll out in our inner thigh. And a nice stretch across the sides of the chest. Good. Make a few more passes here if it feels nice. And then we're going to roll right on top of that roller and come to seated once again. I'm going to cross my right knee over my left leg, and I'm going to rotate onto the floor here. So I'm trying to roll out my IT band, but you never want to roll directly onto that IT band. So we're going to rotate around and roll out along the side of that thigh. If you're screaming at home, just know I'm screaming on the inside with you. And then as your body starts becoming accustomed to this, you can roll more onto that IT band directly. Oh, she's angry. IT bands usually are. This is a good reminder to hydrate if you haven't already today. And a good time for me to mention that after you foam roll, you should definitely be hydrating, over hydrating, so you'll feel better tomorrow. Good, a couple more passes here. We're gonna come back through center. Rotate to the other direction, which I'll do you a solid and get up and down so you can see what I'm doing. So same thing on this side. I'm pressing that knee away and just rolling out the side of that hip and thigh. You can place both hands on the floor here for a little extra support. Maybe it's a little bit more challenging at home to do this. That depends on the length of your arms and the length of your bones. So if you find this really challenging and you need to take modifications, take them. It's not less difficult, I promise. Listen to your body. Roll all the way onto that IT band. Call out a curse word. You can curse me right now. It's okay. I forgive you. Good. And then we're going to come right back to center on that roller. And we're going to send that roller out from underneath us. And we're going to do a little low back release. So I'm lowering all the way down onto my mat here, wiggling out my hips. And I'm going to lift my hips and place that roller right under my sacrum. So find that little bony point behind you. Wiggle out the hips. Make sure we feel nice and supported. Then tuck that chin back to lengthen out the back of your neck. And we're drawing our right knee in first and extending that left leg long. Stretch. Big deep breaths here. Feel that stretch along your inner thighs. And let's switch it out. Draw that left knee into the chest, extend that right leg long, reaching those toes toward the mat. And then draw both knees into your chest. We're gonna hug them in close. Don't lose your roller like I almost did. You can hold on to the edges of the roller if you need to. This is a little low back release. Should feel really nice in your body. And from here, we're gonna shoot both legs up to the ceiling. Find that stability on the roller here. Pull those abdominals in. We're pointing and flexing our feet here, giving our heart a little break. Anytime we have our legs up overhead like this, 
It gives our heart a little bit of a rest. Think about how hard that heart has to work to pump blood all the way down to the tips of your toes. And you're probably wearing shoes that aren't comfortable. I mean, come on. we got to take better care of our bodies. Spread out those toes. We're rolling out these ankles. Showing our feet a little love. They take us everywhere. And reverse those circles. Good. And then give those legs a really good shake. And come back to stillness. We're going to draw small circles on the ceiling here. Sweeping out the hips. Joseph Pilates said, you're only as old as your spine. I think you're only as old as your hips. So we want to have nice, young, mobile hips and bring lots of circulation there. Let's do three. And reverse that circle. Good. For three, two, one. Then bend those knees into your chest. Take a moment to mourn that you did not become a synchronized swimmer because those were some real skills that we just exhibited. Send both feet down to the mat. We're going to lift the hips and remove the roller, lowering all the way down to the mat. And we're going to walk our feet to the outside edges and drop both knees to the left then both knees to the right. Really exaggerating these stretches here. These are soft and gentle. We never want to be forcing any movement. Then heel toe those feet together. And we're going to send those hands out to a T and bring those knees into tabletop. We're crossing our left knee over our right and dropping both knees to the right, sending the head to the left for a gentle twist. And on the next exhale, engage those external obliques to drag the knees back to tabletop, untwist and recross those legs. We're dropping both knees to the left, gaze turns to the right, <sighs> big deep breaths. If you're doing this at home, this is the moment when your puppy dog's going to come up and try to get some attention. So give them some attention right now in, in my honor. Exhale, coming back through center. Reach for those knees. We're going to rock up to seated, and we're going to do a little shoulder release today sitting on this roller. There's no graceful way to do it, so bear with me. I'm going to bring this roller parallel to the mat, and we're going to come to sit on the end of the roller in like a little squat. Sit. Hands reach out to the sides, and we're going to lower down all the way onto that roller, making sure that we're supported from the top of our head down to our tailbone. And take a moment here. Maybe walk those feet a little wide so we feel a little bit more stable. Make sure that we're not leaning one way or the other too far, but that we're nice and anchored. Pull that belly button to spine. We're going to send the hands into cactus arms here, and just allow the weight of gravity to lower those arms down. Feel this stretch along the sides of your chest. <sighs> Big deep breaths, always connecting that breath with the movement. <sighs> On the next exhale, we're gonna drag those arms through center into prayer arms, bringing hands and elbows together, and then open right back up to those cactus arms, turning our attention to the shoulder blades behind the body, feeling them rotate open and closed, massaging out that back body. Let's do three, two, Good, last one. Feel free to do more of these if they feel really good in your body, but we're never forcing movement here. Let's drag those hands overhead, yay! And then drag those elbows down to our ribs. Open up and close. So always finding resistance in our own body here, dragging those heels down into the floor, pulling those abdominals in. Make this super active. Let's do three. Good. 
and last one. Coming back to those goalpost arms or cactus arms, we're going to flip those palms down, placing those hands on the floor, then open right back up to those cactus arms. Feeling the difference one side to the other. My left shoulder is always a little more sticky. That's the one I sleep on. So if you're feeling this on one side in particular, maybe time to re-examine your sleeping patterns or buy a new pillow. Let's do three. Two. And last one. Feeling nice and warmed up in my shoulders here. We're going to sweep those hands up to the ceiling. Palms are facing each other. And again, we're turning our attention to our shoulder blades behind our back. Those shoulder blades, they rotate together and then they open up. So we're going to try to grip that roller with our shoulder blades, like we're pinching a pencil behind the shoulder blades, and then extend those arms out to the ceiling. Drag those shoulder blades down and back. Notice my elbows have a slight bend in them, but I'm not dragging those elbows down to the floor. We're keeping the arms extended. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release, thinking of it low in your shoulder blades. So if you're feeling this scrunched up in your neck, relax your shoulders. Squeeze low and release. Three, two, and last one. Send that right hand up to the floor along our head. My left hand's gonna come down to the floor along my hip and we're just gonna semi-circle around. Little Pilates snow angels dragging those fingertips along the floor. Look at this shoulder mobility today. When's the last time you moved your shoulders like this? I know the answer, it's, it's never. But now we're gonna do it all the time. Semi-circles over and over, loosening up those shoulders. Good, and then as gracefully as you can, that's a joke, there's no graceful way to do it. You're gonna slide right off of that roller and send it out to the side, reacquainting yourself with the earth, maybe windshield wipering those knees, softening everything up. Maybe rolling out the neck, listen to your body here, take any movements that feel really nice. And then we're gonna rock again up to seated and we're gonna roll out the front of our body before we do our pressure point therapy. So we're gonna do our shins next. Standing up, kneeling, facing the roller. I'm gonna place my hands in front of the roller, then lift my hips and place those shins right on top of that roller. So my toes are tucked behind me, elbows are soft. I'm gonna lift the toes and roll out back and forth, rolling out those shins. and then externally rotate the toes, hitting the insides of the shins, pulling your abdominals in, changing the rotation of the feet, hitting all sides of the shins. Good, a couple more passes if it feels nice. Maybe you need to go a little slower than me. I do these three times a week, so my shins are probably a little looser than yours. And then lower those knees down to the mat and bring that roller to the front of the knees. We're gonna walk out, lift the hips into our plank, then lower down onto that roller. Abs are in here, that's gonna support your low back. And you can army crawl, or you can just stretch back and forth for a little quadricep rollout. Depending on your activity level, your hydration the last couple of days, this can be really intense. Listen to your body. Make it smaller if you need to. Maybe you just need to lay on one spot and that feels really good. Externally rotate the toes. We're gonna roll out the inner thighs. Nice active feet. And then externally rotate. So heels are facing away, hitting those outer thighs. Big deep breaths. Remember to breathe. Nice. Coming back through neutral, we're gonna lower those knees down to the outside edges of the mat. I'm gonna scooch forward a little bit, stay on this mat. And I'm gonna place my forearms on that roller and sink into a child's pose. This is a little shoulder release. A 
Let's roll out those forearms back and forth. Rotating the wrists. All that texting, we gotta roll out our forearms. Good. And then sink the hips, take a couple of big deep breaths here. Good breath. Let's remove this roller. We are done with it for the day, I think. I'm pretty sure. And we're going to come back down to that child's pose and add a little rotation. So let's walk our hands to one side of the mat, pressing through the ribs on the other side. Big, deep breaths. And then walk those hands back through center. Pressing through the ribs on the opposite side, breathing into that lung on the opposite side. Stretching out the shoulder. On the next exhale, we're going to come up and sit crisscross applesauce and pick up our pinky ball or tennis ball or whatever we have at home. If it's not comfortable to sit in crisscross applesauce, you can have your legs out front. You can be sitting in a zigzag. You can be sitting on a bolster, whatever feels really good to you. But I'm going to have this pinky ball in my right hand to start, and I'm going to place it right into the center of my chest. Find your collarbone, and we're going to roll out along the collarbone in straight lines toward that shoulder. So, depending on what you've been doing, um, this can be really, really tender, or maybe you've never done it before. So we're going slowly. If we come across a place that feels really sticky or like you're pressing on a bruise, roll that spot out. Tech neck has become like an actual clinical term now um, from all of us on our phones, kind of hunched over our phones. And a good way to combat that little kyphosis in our shoulders, that little rounding of our shoulders, is by rolling out the fascia along the chest to kind of create some more space so we can slide those shoulders down and back. We're always trying to get up out of those shoulders. Good. We're going to send that left hand to the ceiling and we're rolling out along the side of the ribs here. We've got lymph nodes down there. If it makes you want to scream out loud to do this, we might need to be doing it more or we might need a little bit more hydration. Rolling along. Get in there. When else are you going to do it? Who else is going to do it? Just us. And then lower that arm. We're going to go right into the other side. Using the palm of my hand to just kind of guide me. You can close your eyes here. Circle around any little sticky spots. And then send that opposite arm up to the ceiling. Roll out those lymph nodes and all those muscles along the rib cage. If your ball gets away from you at any point, that's fine. That's part of the fun of this, is chasing the pinky ball around the room. Good. Give yourself any extra roll outs that feel really nice in your chest, and we're gonna get into a little posterior chain release. So we're gonna place this pinky ball. Let's be parallel on our mat. I'm going to reach for the top of my upper trap muscle here and place my pinky ball right at the top there, then lower down onto the mat. Once we're lowered down, you can kind of wiggle around. We want to make sure that we're not on a bone, but we're on a little fleshy bit of muscle there. And I have my knees bent, and we're taking big, deep breaths here. <sighs> Feeling this little ball releasing that pressure under our shoulders. Maybe send the hands a little bit out to a T to really allow more pressure on that ball from the weight of that arm. Big, deep breaths. If you're laying here like, what the hell is this about? I don't feel this at all. Maybe try moving around a little bit and find your own personal sweet spot. Everybody's different. It should feel like you're pressing on a bruise when you place that ball. Remember, we never want you in pain. Discomfort's okay. That's where we grow. But if you're feeling pain, we need to adjust this ball. 
let's reach that hand to the ceiling. I've got this ball under my right shoulder, so I'm gonna reach my right hand to the ceiling, and then bend that right elbow and reach my right hand toward my left shoulder, and hold on to my left, with my left hand to my right elbow, and kind of give that shoulder a little tug. I'm trying to get you up out of that shoulder, keeping that pressure on the ball. If this is feeling easy breezy, you do this all the time, Go ahead and lift those toes. Dig the heels in, and you'll see immediately you can add a little more pressure to that ball. Or if it's feeling like you've got a rock under your shoulder, maybe ease off a little bit. We do not want you in pain. Add a little motion here, maybe rocking back and forth, up and down. More pressure. One more big deep breath. Tugging that shoulder down, lowering it across our chest. On the exhale, I'm gonna reach for that pinky ball, and I'm going to lower that pinky ball from the top of my trap right into like my mid-back, that same area where we rolled out before. Once it's placed under your back, again, we're rolling back and forth, side to side. Find your sweet spot where it feels really, probably torturous, but good, manageable. Place your right hand on your right rib cage. Take a big inhale. We should feel that ball under our lungs, under our ribs beneath us when we breathe deep. Allow the head to rest. Dig those heels into the floor. Squeeze the glutes. Big deep breath. Close your eyes here. Our 2020 motto that has become our 2021 motto is breathe through the discomfort. Feel free to adjust up or down as you're laying on that ball. As things start to release, adjust as necessary. And then sweeping that same hand up and over, crossing the chest, reaching for that opposite elbow, dragging that shoulder down. Big, deep breaths. I hold each of these poses one to two minutes in class under each pressure point. Um, you're welcome to hold them up to probably two to three minutes if you're doing this on your own time. Release that right hand. We're gonna reach for that ball and remove it and lower all the way down to the mat, feeling a significant deflation under that right shoulder, hopefully feeling a lot softer under that right side body. We're gonna reach our pinky ball under that left shoulder, the same spot, up high. So we're doing this exact same series on the other side of the body and noticing pretty quickly both sides of the body are not the same. So you might need to adjust this ball higher or lower onto this side if you're left hand dominant. Maybe you play baseball for a living. Your shoulders are gonna be different sizes. Those muscles are going to be different levels of flexibility. The fascia will be tighter on one side than it is on the other. Really dig those heels in, press into that ball, slide those shoulders down and back. Then sweep that hand up and cross the chest. Pressing into that ball, big deep breaths. Close your eyes. Imagine that ball melting all the tension out of your neck and shoulders. And on the next exhale, we're gonna gently rock off of that ball, remove it from that upper trap, place it in that mid back. So uh, below your shoulder blades, not on your spine, to the left of your spine and wiggle around and find that placement that works best for your body. You might need to do this a couple of times. It's gonna be uncomfortable. Again, you can place that left hand on your left rib cage. Take a big inhale. 
Feeling those lungs expand into that ball underneath the body. Sweeping that left hand to the ceiling and crossing the body here, dragging that shoulder down and keeping that pressure on the ball. Relax your forehead, unclench your jaw. Stay with your breath, stay in your body here. Two more big deep breaths. And on that next exhale, we're gonna roll off of that bot off of that ball. Remove that ball, wiggle around. Should feel nice and soft under your shoulders. Oh yeah, deflation city. Then place that ball. I want you to reach for your hip bone here. Find your hips. And once you've found your hip, we're gonna place that ball right above your hip on the right side, right above that crest of that pelvic bone. So once it's placed on that bony ridge, we're gonna extend that leg long and then extend the opposite long. So we want the full weight of those legs to be pressing on that area. Big deep breaths. <sighs> And then bend that right knee, dragging that right foot onto the floor. We're gonna hinge open and closed over this ball. So keeping that bend of the knee, keeping the opposite hip planted down, you can even place those left fingers on that hip to keep it down. You don't wanna be rolling over here. We're opening and closing over that ball. Let's do one more. We're gonna hold this hinge open and take three big deep breaths. And then close that hinge. We're going to reach for that ball and slide it straight down into the side of our like medial glute. So find that hip bone where the ball was right above. We're gonna place it right below that hip bone on the right side in the side of that glute muscle. Again, you can bend the opposite knee and kind of wiggle around on this ball. Find the sweet spot that works for you. But we wanna be kind of toward the edge near the hip. And then once you've found a nice sweet spot, we're gonna extend both legs long and try to relax. Do a little body scan here from the bottoms of your feet to the top of your head. Where can we release some tension? Come back to your breath. Big inhales through the nose. And slow exhales through the mouth like we're blowing through a straw. On this next exhale, we're dragging that right foot onto the mat, feeling super tender there. We're gonna open and close, hinge over that ball. Feeling like we're just firmly pressing on a bruise here. Try to relax those muscles, soften all the way over that ball. Let's hold this hinge open, opposite hip is planted. Try to soften, relax those shoulders. And on the next exhale, close that hinge, reach for that ball, extend that right leg long, feeling totally like you're a pancake on that side of your body. 
really deflated. Let's get into the other side. Bend that left knee. We're reaching for that pelvic crest again and then placing that ball right above the ridge of that bone behind you. And then extending that leg long, wiggling around, finding your own sweet spot here, relaxing your neck and shoulders, allowing your tongue to just float in the mouth. Trying to clear your mind of any intrusive thoughts here. This is a great moment to just be in your body. Let's bend that left knee and we're adding those hinges open and closed. Taking notice if one side feels way more tender than the other. And then we're gonna hold that hinge open, keep that opposite hip planted down and take three big deep breaths. Soften your muscles. Exhale, bend that knee. We're gonna send that knee over the opposite knee and slide that ball straight down. Again, we're finding that sweet spot right on the other side of that hip bone. So we were above the hip and now we're gonna go right below the hip into that glute muscle, wiggling around and finding your sweet spot. Might be different than on the other side before extending that leg long and settling in. Thinking of the rise and fall of your chest here. We're bending that left knee and bringing that movement back into the body, opening and closing that hinge over that ball. Don't force it here. We don't need to really open up super far. If it feels uncomfortable, make it smaller. Let's hold that hinge open, soften all of our muscles here. Big deep breaths. On the next exhale, close that hinge. We're gonna remove the ball and just place it on the floor beside you. If it rolls away, that's okay. We can't control everything. Shake out those legs and just settle into a little Shavasana rest pose here. Allow those feet to fall open. We're gonna do a little body scan here, just trying to relax. So tuning into the breath here, big deep inhales again through the nose. Exhales through the mouth. And starting with the bottoms of your feet, bringing your attention there, thinking of where we can soften. Maybe wiggle out those toes. Roll out those ankles. Soften as you go. Send that attention up through your calf muscles and along your shins. Softening. And then over your knees, around your thighs, and over your hips. Relaxing your muscles as you go. Think about where your body touches the ground here. Softening your belly. and your chest and your shoulders sinking into the ground.
soft and those arms opening up, relaxing those elbows and forearms, those wrists and fingers. And then turn your attention to a release in your neck, softening your chin, your jaw, relaxing your forehead. Taking a moment of gratitude for this amazing body and everything that it does for us. Remembering that whatever comes next after this, whatever challenge we need to tackle, whatever stressor is going to come our way today or tomorrow, that you can always come back to your breath and come back to your body and you can find peace there. Feel free to sink into this pose for a few extra minutes. If you're feeling ready to go, you can bend your knees and place those feet on the floor, introducing movement gently, swaying the hips. We worked really hard for this calm peace. So let's be gentle coming back to reality. Reach those hands overhead. Give yourself a big stretch like you're just waking up in the morning. And then we're going to roll over to one side into a little seed pose, resting our head on our bicep here, pressing that top hand into the floor. We're going to come up to seated and come into crisscross applesauce, one of my favorite poses. Sitting up tall on those sits bones, maybe give yourself a little rotational twist here. Think about what feels nice. Maybe reach one hand overhead for a side body stretch and then the other. Good, and let's end with three deep breaths here all together, coming back to our bodies, coming back to reality. Reach those hands toward the opposite sides of the room. Big inhale, and on the exhale, sweep those hands down and all the way up. Inhale. One more time. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me today, for taking some time for this amazing body, giving it some gentle movement. We'll see you next time.